Oh yeah. Well, that's some electric slide guitar right there, and that's what this video is all about. My name is Keith Wyatt, and I'd like to welcome you to this uh, tape. And we're going to spend some time together learning the fundamentals of slide guitar, and specifically talking about electric slide guitar. Now, I want to point out that there is another video that's a companion to this one. It's called acoustic slide guitar. In many ways, the two instruments are the same. They have the same number of strings. They can be tuned similarly, but they obviously have a much different sound, and they're used in different ways. So if you're really into the subject of slide, I suggest you take a look at that one. All right? Now, what we're going to do is uh, talk a little bit about left-hand technique, right-hand technique, about style. You'll learn some phrases. And then uh, at the very end, we'll get into some open tunings as well. But we're going to spend most of our time in standard tuning because that's the best way to cross over from your normal style of guitar playing into slide. And once you get a handle on it, it's not that hard. All right? First thing we're going to do is tune up. So make sure that you and I are playing in the same key. I'm going to play each string for you twice, and I want you to tune your guitar to mine. Okay? Here we go, starting with the high E string. B. G. D. A. Once you have all the strings together, play an open chord like E. See if it sounds close. That's pretty close. It's blues. Okay, all set. Let's get down to it. Now, before we get into actually playing some licks, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the equipment that you need to play slide guitar. Obviously, you need one of these, a guitar, and we're talking about electric guitar, so it probably looks something like mine. It uh, doesn't really matter so much what the make of the guitar is. If you look at famous slide guitar players and what instruments they play, you see it's, it's really all over the map. Uh, some people have totally customized instruments and others, like uh, Dwayne Allman, use a standard Les Paul. It's mainly a matter of finding your tone and your personality with your instrument. It might take a while to find the right one for you, but listen to the players you like, find out what they use, and that's a good start, at least. Sometimes it's surprising, though, a really cheap guitar can sound great for slide, especially if you put a little distortion on it, because it has a certain personality to it. Now, this guitar has single coil pickups. All of these are single coil right here. And um, yet, uh, I can make it sound any way I want through the amp with distortion or with reverb. So there's a lot of flexibility that you can get outside of the guitar itself. Now, as far as the uh, setup of the instrument, if you play slide guitar on a guitar that you ordinarily use for other things, you might find that you fret out. In other words, you're going you're to play a note, and it might sound like this. Right? You hear those? Notes kind of bumping up against the frets there. Right? That's the sound you don't want. And the reason is that it cuts down on, th on the sustain of the notes and takes away some of the personality. So for uh, a real good slide sound, I recommend that you set your action a little bit higher than normal. And that in combination with probably heavier strings. Now these are, are tens, a 10 through 46, pretty standard set. But I have hiked the action up just a little bit, mainly on the high strings. The top two strings are where you're going to have the most trouble because they're light and they will react the most quickly to the weight of the slide. So try just bumping those strings up a little bit and maybe put an 11 on the high string and see how it works. If you only have one guitar, you don't want to screw around with it too much because it'll make it difficult to play what you ordinarily play. So it's a compromise. And once you get more into the style, you might uh, find that you want to dedicate a guitar to slide playing. 
All right, so maybe a little heavier strings, maybe a little higher action, the pickups and all that kind of stuff doesn't matter so much. Um, let's talk about the slide itself. Now you can see here I'm playing a uh, glass slide. And if you look at it, it's pretty thick. You can see that the diameter of the slide, the, the thickness of the glass, gives us some weight. That's a good thing. You want some weight on the slide because that decreases the amount of pressure you have to apply to the string to get the notes to ring. And the less pressure you have to put on the string, the less likely you are to fret out. Okay? So uh, if you have a slide like this, for instance, this is glass as well, but see how much thinner that is compared to this one. I recommend this kind of a slide because this one, you're just going to have to push down a little harder and that's going to create other problems. Now some people play a metal slide. Check this out. Big old hunk of brass. You can see it's bigger around. These come in all different sizes too. And there are stainless steel slides. Glass slides come in different lengths, different uh, size holes there for your fingers. Lots of variety. It used to be you had to make your own slide. Now you can buy them in the store. And they're pretty cheap, so uh, you want to experiment a little bit. As far as the length of the slide, it doesn't have to be any longer than the uh, width of your neck. Uh, I've gotten used to this one, so I can move it around pretty well. But uh, if it was about an inch shorter, that'd be fine, too. Uh, as big around as it is, that, that's dictated by which finger you're going to use the slide on. Uh, if you look at different slide players, some play over the top with one finger or just hold the slide like a bar, like that. Some reach up like that. There's no law that says you've got to do it one way or the other. It's mainly a matter of convenience. Many players play with the slide on their third finger. I play with the slide on my fourth finger. And the reason is that then I can play other things with the other three fingers, like rhythm parts. Right? And everything's pretty normal. And then when I want to play the slide, there it is. It hasn't interfered with the other stuff that I'm doing, and it's always ready to go. So if you haven't got a preference yet, then uh, try out your fourth finger and get a slide that fits fairly snugly around the finger. Notice this one stops at the knuckle. You still have to be able to bend your finger to make it work right. Okay. So now we know about some possibilities. Glass, metal, size, weight, what finger to wear it on. Um, pretty much ready to go. slide can sound more like a voice than just about any other technique in guitar playing. When you think about the, uh, the history of the instrument, the early slide players, in blues at least, uh, many of them started out using the slide in direct imitation of what they were already singing. There's a slide guitar player that did a lot of gospel recording named Blind Willie Johnson. Played acoustic guitar, played a lot of stuff down low on the neck, and he would vocalize, in other words, not really singing lyrics, but uh, just making sounds and imitating them with the slide, you know. So it's almost like the slide is an extension of the voice, and that's really the key to phrasing. And to develop good phrasing, there's a couple of technical things that are much different from standard guitar playing. So we're going to take a look at those one at a time. First of all, let's talk about intonation. Um, this is not really a problem on a standard guitar because the guitar is what they call a tempered instrument. That means that you've got frets, and it uh, keeps everything organized, kind of like the keys on a piano. Uh, as long as you lay your finger down, you're going to hit a note, and the note is going to be the same distance from every other note. But when you play the slide, the good and the bad thing about it is that you have no more frets. You can see them, but they don't affect the sound. So you really have to find your notes by ear. It's one finger, fretless guitar playing, whole different ball game. The key to intonation is to see where the note is. Instead of being located where your finger plays the note, 
Here's E, for instance, on the third string uh, at the ninth fret. Notice that my finger is kind of located right next to that dot there. It's in between the two frets. Now, when I play the note, the string is actually hitting the fret itself. As it touches the fret, it stops vibrating, so this becomes the end of the string. And the other end is at the bridge, and, and so that's how the, the notes change pitch. On the slide, however, I don't want to put the slide where my finger is because it'll be flat. Check it out. See how different that is? I just put the slide at the same point in between the frets, and it's wrong. That's because the slide has to be right over the fret, which is the same spot where the note comes from when you press it down. Now I've got the slide positioned directly over the fret. Compare. Now intonation is something that is going to change a little bit all over the guitar because the frets are different distances apart. As you move up and down, the angle of your hand and the angle of the slide also change in relation to your body. So a good experiment, a good way to get started is to pick random notes up and down everywhere and play the note first with your finger and then play it with the slide. For instance, let's go down lower. I'll play this note here. Third fret, second string. That sounds all right. How about the fourth fret on the fourth string? See, as long as I position the slide right over the fret, I'm going to be all right. Let's go up high. I'm going to play the uh, D. The 15th fret. Now part of the charm of the sound of slide is that you can actually fudge a little bit on the intonation. In other words, you can go like this. See, I came in from below. It makes it sound more vocal. That's what singers do, right? Now if you go sharp, that's usually a giveaway that you're not really playing on pitch. So if anything, come in flat and work your way up. But the more you experiment, the more you'll be able to hit that note right on the money. Did you hear any difference in those two phrases? If you did, it was because I changed my right hand technique in the middle. And what I did was I started out with bare fingers, and then I switched over to the pick. Now when you play slide, that's a basic choice that you have to make as a player, and you should make it pretty early on, because the choice is going to affect your technique down the road. Uh, neither one is necessarily better or worse than the other. They're just different, and it's a matter of your own preference. When you compare the two techniques, the advantage of the pick is that you're normally using a pick, I trust, if you play electric guitar, so you've got a certain technique already established. Also, the pick gives the note a lot of attack. It makes the notes louder, makes them sing out more. The disadvantage of the pick is that because you're holding this piece of plastic here, it means you've got less contact between your fingers, your skin, and the strings, and that can lead to some noise problems, as we'll see. The advantage of the fingers, on the other hand, is that they're very warm. It's the sound of that skin touching the string. It gives it a real personality. The disadvantage is that if you don't already finger pick, it's learning a new technique, and it requires a whole different view of your right hand. So I'm going to show you a little bit of each one. My personal preference is for the fingers, and the reason is I think the tone is better, the control is certainly better. So what you give up in dynamics, being able to get loud, that is, you definitely gain in personality. All right, so let's, let's take a little exploration of the right hand. Whichever technique you use, the difficult thing is damping, and that means preventing the strings that you're not playing from ringing out. Okay, let me give you a demonstration. Now, as I'm changing from string to string, even though I'm moving pretty quickly, you only hear one note at a time. And I'll play that real slowly for you. Play along with me, and 
see if you can get the same technique. I'm holding the pick the way that most everybody does, thumb and forefinger, and on one string, I pluck the note, and then I bring the pick back down and damp it. All right? When I switch to the second string, I do the same motion, but I let the pick cross over, and the act of picking the second string brings my thumb into contact with the third string, and that means that the third string stops. Likewise, when I come back to the third string, when I bring my pick down to hit the note, my other fingers come back into contact with the second string. So in each case, every time the pick comes down, it's stopping the string that I just played and is getting me ready to pick the string that I want to play. Right, play that together with me a couple times. Notice also that the heel of my hand is right down on the string, so I'm right ahead of the bridge there. Regardless of the kind of guitar you have, the kind of bridge, you can always find a spot there where you can rest your hand without deadening the strings too much. All right, let's add another string to that. Let's go to the fourth string. I'm using all down strokes in each case as I cross to the next string. I'm using the motion of the pick and the fingers to damp the other strings. Now the nice thing about slide is that it's really not necessary to go fast. That's not the point of the technique, is to play notes with personality and clarity. That's why damping is so important. Now a good uh, little trick uh, to help you practice damping is to play bugle calls. All right, check this out. That's tricky for reasons other than just damping. It's because of that position shift there. But you can think of things like that, sounds that you've heard before. Start out slowly. Because you're required to cross from string to string all the time, it gives your right hand a workout, right? Now that's with the pick. Let me show you the same thing with the bare fingers. You'll see the technique is a little different. In this case, I'm going to pluck that third string with my index finger. Now notice that my thumb is down on the low strings, second finger and third finger are touching the high string. So the only note that can possibly make any sound whatsoever is a third string. And when I cross to the second string, I'm using my second finger to pluck. My third finger stays right where it is. My first finger is just out of the picture. And the thumb moved over. So as I cross from the third to the second, my thumb moves over. When I come back, my second finger acts as the damper. So you get this little dance going on with your fingers. Now when we add the fourth string, check this out. Now I get my thumb going as a pick. Pluck the note, bring it back down. First finger. Second finger. First. Thumb. First. Second. And you can see that it's a, a very clear way to get the notes to be separated from one another. Playing the bugle call. I can get the, all the speed that I need with those fingers. Obviously, if I was trying to play fast, I'd run into problems with just the bare fingers. But for slide, it's personality much more than speed that is going to count in making your style sound different than anybody else. Now let's do a little exercise uh, to work on your intonation. As I mentioned, slide is one finger fretless guitar. So uh, all you really need is one string. As a matter of fact, it might be interesting to know there's a, an instrument uh, that they used to play, I don't know if they still have them, in the Mississippi Delta, it's called a diddly bow. 
wonder where Bo Diddley got his name. The Diddley bow is two nails hammered into a barn door. What they used to do is take an old broom that uh, they couldn't use anymore and take the wire off the broom, stretch it from one nail to the other nail, put a brick underneath the thing as a bridge, and then use a bottle or a piece of metal and just slide up and down that wire. And the entire barn door would resonate, and that was how a lot of great guitar players got their start, was playing a diddly bow. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to play a little diddly bow for you. And um, the idea here is to play a melody and instead of allowing yourself the luxury of moving across the neck in patterns, as we're used to doing in standard guitar playing, you're going to move up and down. All right? And the best way to do it is just, just imitate what I play. It'll be fairly slow, but you might want to wind back and play this a couple of times and see if you can just nail it down. Because I'm going to be making some fairly wide moves here, but as I make each move, I'm going to be trying to get as precisely as possible right over the note. Okay? We're going to play it in the key of E. We're going to play the entire melody on the second string. As far as the right hand is concerned, it really doesn't matter at this point what technique you're using. You can use the pick, you can use your fingers. It's mainly a left hand exercise. All right? So just follow along with me. And here we go, starting at the fifth fret. Get that note in tune, and here we go. One, two, three, four. Keep going. Now go back down in half steps. Now we're going to go up a half step. And jump. Now that first lick. Keep going. And go up again. It's the 16th fret. 17th fret. Keep going. And back down. Believe it or not, you just played a 12-bar blues in the key of E, and we made some note choices there that are pretty common for blues. They reflected the sound of the other chords, which we'll talk about in a minute. And um, it was an intonation study, so trying to center that slide right over the fret. Uh, it sounds pretty dead doing it that way, to be honest. I, I'm barely able to hold myself back from putting a little phrasing on each one of those notes because that's really the sound of slide guitar. So once you get that initial technique thing out of the way, you really want to get into the sound and that's what we're going to do in a minute. All right, you got your left hand together, got your right hand together. Let's start playing some licks. Now we're in the key of E, and uh, we're going to stay in the key of E for a minute here. As I mentioned at the beginning, we're going to concentrate our attention mostly on standard tuning, because that's the easiest way to cross over into the other things that you already play without having to go through a whole retuning thing. So you need to, uh, to develop some licks in standard tuning. And uh, key of E, right where we were working on the, uh, the damping, is the best place to start. So we're uh, right around the E chord shape, roots at the seventh fret, and then barring those three notes. Now why is that such a good spot? Well, it's because you've got those three notes together. It almost creates a miniature open tuning. Anytime you have three notes across one fret, it gives you much more flexibility in how you phrase. So let's come up with a little uh, set of notes that we can play right in that position. These are not going to look like standard scale patterns that you may be used to. Slide's a little bit different. Starting with that E there, we'll just do it with the fingers first. Okay, there's a major scale. Right, just staying in that one position, that's an easy one. Now, duplicate that with the slide. Okay. Now, going down. Play that with the slide. You can actually keep going down. It's got a little bit more motion involved there. Right. You have to be real 
careful on your damping on the low strings because that's where the noise will start to come out. How about going up? Add a note. Keep, keep going up in half steps all the way up to that B there. Now that might not seem like much of a scale pattern. It really isn't a standard scale pattern at all. But what it is is a set of notes in that region that can all be used over an E chord. Believe it or not, it seems like more than you're used to. But let's, uh, let's put it to work by playing some phrases. Now to phrase and make it sound like blues, first thing you have to do is think like a singer. So we're going to come into the notes from below, slide out of the notes, go into some notes from above, and very important, we're going to use vibrato. Let me demonstrate, and I'll, like, I'll explain the techniques. Those are all real standard phrases in that area of the neck. They use the little pattern sets of notes that we were talking about. And you notice that I didn't play any of them just flat just jumping from note to note. I'm always adding a little something in between. So for instance, just going from here to there. Some of the effects are pretty subtle unless you break them down. For instance, it's a little flat deliberately. Then it resolves. And then I come back to the uh, root again. That gives it that human quality. It's a little bit out of tune, but deliberately, and when you resolve it, it shows that you know what you're doing. You're not just playing flat. Now on that E, when I hit the E, I'm adding vibrato. Vibrato is an extremely important technique anytime you want to sustain a note. And it's pretty simple. What I'm doing is letting my thumb act as an anchor on the back of the neck. Just put it where you'd normally put it if you played sort of standard technique and use that to rock back and forth and then the rest of my hand is moving along parallel to the frets and it really comes more from the wrist and from the arm than from anything else. It's not a finger thing, it's farther down. And I can go above and below the note. And depending on the, uh, the effect you want to get, you can go real wide or you can go kind of narrow and go fast, go real slow. Each one has a different personality. Certain slide players in the history of slide, especially electric slide, going back to a guy named Robert Nighthawk, followed by a guy named Earl Hooker, followed by a guy you might know named Mick Taylor. They all studied each other, right? Mick studied Earl, Earl studied Robert, and they learned how to play that vibrato. It's a big part of your sound, so you want to work on that one and get comfortable and be even with your attack. Okay. Now another little phrasing technique. I think of that as surrounding the note, and the note that I'm surrounding is the third. Here's the root. Go up the, ma the major scale to the major third. Play it above, and then come in from below. Very common little phrase there. Here's another common phrase. Now what I'm doing there is coming into a note from above, I go down a whole step, pluck the note first, slide it down, cross strings, and come back. All right. So right there I can play a couple of phrases together, like the ones I just showed you, and it starts to sound like a blues. Now each one of those was a complete phrase, and each phrase was about four beats in length. And you take those phrases and string them together, and that's what creates a solo. They sound nice with one another, and they, they're the kind of thing you could also sing. Now to build up your vocabulary, what you need to do is just keep learning more of those phrases. And the best way to do it by far is to imitate somebody that already knows some phrases and just learn from them. That's me. I'm your teacher. So uh, what I'm going to ask you to do right now is a little call and response. In other words, I'm going to play a lick, 
and then you're going to play the exact same lick and you're going to imitate me as closely as you can. And then I'm going to play stuff from that whole area there, all the notes that we talked about going up and down and give you some ideas for how to play against an E chord, playing a shuffle, playing a blues shuffle, just that one chord. And uh, we'll have some fun, okay? Here we go. Here we go now. One, two, one, two, watch me. Now you play that. Match those little changes there. There's another one. Now we're going to go on the third string. string. Wind up on the fifth there. Go back up. Let's bring it on home now. did the call and response, all of those phrases are pretty standard phrases that you hear a lot of slide players use. Another way to build up your own vocabulary of licks is to take licks that you normally play with your fingers and see if you can imitate them on the slide. And in some cases, it might be pretty easy. In other cases, it's a real challenge. For instance, just think of a, a pretty straight ahead rock and roll lick. Pretty classic rock and roll lick. Now. I can't really imitate that in the same way. Obviously, I'm not going to bend strings, and it's hard to get that, that unison thing going with the slide, so I'll try it like this. Pretty close. All I had to do there was pluck the second string twice, then the first string, and then... Here's another one. Right? That's, a, that's a pretty tricky lick when you think about it. It's... Moving all across the neck down to the fourth string. It's got a high note, low note, and it, it covers a lot of territory. Now, to play it in that position with the slide, let me pick the thing up here. That's kind of difficult because I have to make some awkward leaps. I'm going to refinger the thing. Now, that may not seem much easier, but for me, it is a little bit easier. And the reason is that. A, I've got the, these two notes now at the same fret, which I didn't up in here. So it makes it easier for me to get the right sound. Okay. All right, you get the idea. I mean, they're your licks, right? So you want to keep them. Don't get rid of them. Keep them and transfer them over to the slide. It's going to help your personality come through when you pick up the slide. You want to sound like a different person all of a sudden. 
But it will take a while to get your technique to the point where you feel confident with the slide. Well, now that we've got a sense of phrasing, we need to put those phrases together in the most common setting that there is in blues, which is the 12-bar blues. And uh, just a quick refresher about the 12-bar uh, the progression. We're in the key of E, and uh, that means the one chord is E, of course. The other chords are the four chord. It's the fourth note of the E scale, A, and the fifth note of the E scale, which is B commonly called 145 and um, it's good to know them that way because whatever key you're in 1, 4, and 5 of the key are going to be the three chords in the 12 bar. Uh, 12 bar basically comes in, in two main varieties. One of them where you play the one chord for four bars like this, third bar, fourth bar, now you change to the B. Notice by the way I can still play my rhythm parts my three fingers while the slide is on my fourth finger. Here comes the B chord, cheat a little bit there, back to A. All right. The other variety is called the quick change and the only difference is that in the second bar of the progression you go to the four chord instead of staying on one. It sounds like this, two, three, four, E, go right to A back to E. And from this point on it's identical. Back to the A chord and so on, right? You get the picture. So when you start to play a blues, you got to make clear is it going to be a slow change as they say or a quick change. It makes a big difference for the slide because it's going to affect the choice of notes as we're going to see in just a second here. All right, now we've got our three chords and we know what kind of context we're going to be playing in. It's a 12-bar shuffle. And uh, now I have to make some choices about where I'm going to play the notes that belong to the A chord and the B chord. There's two main ways that people do that. The first one is to take the shape that we've got, playing around the 7th uh, and ninth fret area here on E, and just take all those licks and transfer them right up the neck to A. Now you have to find yourself first, and so take the root. There's A up there. There's the bar chord. So that means that those licks in the key of E, same exact shape will apply over the A chord. Right? Then you just move back down when the chord changes. When the B chord happens, well, where's B? It's up there. Here's A. Right. Now there's a lot of hand motion involved there, but once I get into my new position, everything is very familiar. Keep in mind, these are not your standard fingering patterns, and you don't want to be always relating these necessarily to the other shapes that you're used to playing. Think of, right now, think of the slide shapes as having their own little sound. Get, get comfortable with them, and then sooner or later they'll start to blend in with your other uh, patterns, okay? So let's play a 12-bar blues in the key of E. We'll make it a slow change. And um, I'm going to play some phrases in each position. And as the chords change, I'll just change right along with them, okay? Here we go. A one, a two, a you know what to do. That's pretty straight ahead, isn't it? Right? And you, you hear those same familiar phrases each time. Now, actually, I got into trouble there. I don't know if you noticed, but coming down from the five chord to the four, I wanted to change right back to the E, and I cheated. 
I knew that there was a big fat E chord there at the 12th fret, and there's an E on the fourth string, so I used that. Hey, that's okay, you know? If you know how to do that, and you know how to blend those two main chord shapes there, then you already got a pretty good handle on how to phrase with the slide. Now we're going to take a look at another way of phrasing, and this is to find your chord shapes in one position. Here's my E chord. That's pretty easy. Now where would I find an A chord in the same area of the neck? Now it takes a little inventiveness here. I've got to get rid of the slide. You know this one at the fifth fret. See if you know this one. I know it looks kind of weird. About like that. Do you know a D7 chord? Of course you do. Down the open position, D7. There's a root. Find that root, A in this case, on the fourth string. Play the same shape. There's A7, right? Now the advantage of that chord is that it's right next to E. And since we're playing around chord shapes, that means that if I want to play around that A chord, any of the notes of the chord, and notes that fit around those notes are going to sound pretty good. That means I don't have to shift position so much, right? So there's my A chord. Now let me show you just a, a couple of phrases getting you from E to A. And we'll have a little backup here. First you'll hear an E chord, it'll just sustain, you'll hear the E phrase. We'll change the chord to A and you'll hear the A phrase in the same position. Okay, starting with E. Here we go. Here comes the A chord. There's the A on the second string. There's the other A down there. All right, you see how those, those notes are all centered around the shape of the chord. It's almost like you're seeing the shape of the chord while you're playing the phrase. It's, it's like a little ghost imprint of the chord there and you play around it. And to make sure that all the notes that you pick out are going to sound like they really go with the harmony. Now the same thing applies to the B chord. Where's a B chord? Well, there's one right there in seventh position. B7, of course. And so when I'm looking for my notes, okay. now let's hear the E chord again. And now the B chord. You see how I'm following the shape of the chord? It's a little bit awkward because you have to keep shifting frets, but you get the sound of the chord, and that's the important thing. So now we can play a 12 bar blues all based around the 7th and 9th fret area. Let's do it, okay? Let's make this one a quick change. Quick change in the key of E. Here we go. One, Two, three, four. Here's A. Here's B. Now that's pretty straight ahead. I know that as you're looking at that and trying to follow my slide moving around, it's got to be a little confusing because it's constant motion there. But if you take a second and just experiment with the shapes of those chords yourself and literally play the notes, play the arpeggios of the chords with your slide, that's how you're going to learn to get these shapes to flow into each other. Then you've got two choices. And that pretty well covers things. You're, you're going to be a pretty good slide phraser by the time you're able to do that. Now, if we're going to talk about slide guitar, we really have to touch on the subject of open tunings. I want to mention again that the companion video to this one, which is called Acoustic Slide Guitar, gets heavily into the subject of open tunings, and you really get some detail there 
we're going to touch on it here. Most of our stuff is in standard, but open tuning is not that, you know, it's not that strange when you get down to it. And I'll give you a couple of little quick tips right now about how to deal with it, and uh, then you can run from there. All right. Now, um, way back when we were doing bugle calls, we ran into a little problem. Remember, we were going had to jump up. Right? That note is a problem. It belongs to the chord, but it's nowhere within easy reach of our ninth fret area. So if I want to be able to play extra chord tones and also come up with some different note combinations that I can't play in standard tuning, I need to retune. There's really no way around it. And so here's a partial tuning that a lot of people use. And especially with an electric guitar, if you have a whammy bar on there, this one actually has a whammy bar, it's not attached at the moment. Uh, every time you change the tuning, everything goes out of whack, so it's uh, something that most people avoid. But this is a partial tuning, it's not as much trouble as the others. And it's this, it's called drop D. There are other names for these tunings as well, but uh, this one's pretty descriptive. Take your E string, tune it down to D. Everything changes a little bit, so it's really hard to get back in perfect tune again without using a tuner, but that's pretty close. Okay, does your tuning match mine? Okay. Try to get it to stop vibrating. Okay. Now we've got a... Uh, a chord on the top four strings that we didn't have before. We already had a G chord, and now we've got an extra note added to it. It's that note that we were missing. You had to go all the way up there to get it, and now it's right at the same fret. Now it's called drop D tuning, and what we really did was create an open G chord. There's the root, there's the entire chord. That doesn't mean that we have to play in the key of G, however. I can still find any note that I want and build the shape around it, and I can play in any key using that same tuning. So if I want to play an E, here's my E at the ninth fret, third string. See, it's right at the same fret, so now I don't have to make that jump. Also, the extra added advantage is that I've got two notes here played as a combination that I didn't have before. And that means that I've got some extra little melodies that I can play. That's playing the second and third strings, and then the first and second strings. It's a nice combination right there. You can keep going, actually. So with those extra chord tones, now I've got more possibilities. It sounds a little bit more like traditional slide, and when you listen to recordings and you're hearing slide players, quite often they'll be using a partial tuning, and you'll be mystified if you're trying to play some of those licks in standard tuning. You just can't get the combinations. But try retuning that note, and you'll be surprised how many different things become possible. Now there's one more open tuning that we're going to talk about. And uh, this is different than the ones that are discussed in the acoustic slide video also. Same idea, but a different tuning. This one is called Open E. Now, Open E is a good tuning to know, among other things, because uh, it was the tuning that Dwayne Allman used to use. And Dwayne Allman, uh, in many ways, kind of wrote the book on modern electric blues slide guitar. So uh, it's worthwhile learning from a guy like that. The idea of this open tuning is that you're going to tune the open strings to match the sound of this chord. Now there's a, a tuning like that called open D. It's the exact same tuning, it's down a whole step. Now why pick open E instead of open D? Well one big reason is that when you tune the guitar to a new tuning, and you tune the strings down, especially if you have sort of normal gauge strings, they start to get so loose and floppy that they're hard to control, and you start to fret out, right? If you tune the strings up, 
the tension increases and it actually makes it better for slide. Doesn't mean that you can't play in the same keys. You've got all the same keys, just that your open strings are different. Okay, here's how it goes. Start with the uh, fifth string and you want to tune it up so it matches that note right there, which is part of the chord. And then the fourth string. Tune up to an E. And the third string, you're going to tune it up to that note. Now, inevitably, the other strings are going to change a little bit. So just fool around. That sounds pretty close. Now, if you're on stage and you're retuning, that doesn't take too long. Open D, when you're tuning down and the strings get floppy, it takes longer. So this is a practical tuning. Now, what happens when you're in open E? What happens to your... your uh, scale patterns and all that. Well, they're out the window. Forget it. But you got a big advantage, which is that across any one fret, every note that you play belongs to a chord. And that means that you really only have to learn one pattern, and you can play across any chord you want. Now, what Dwayne Allman would do, for instance, he'd be tuned to open E, and he'd want to play in the key of D. Okay? No problem. Where's the D chord? It's at the 10th fret, right where it always is. Okay? Now, to play phrases against a D chord, I'll show you the pattern that you're going to use, and uh, it's all based around that 10th fret area. This will be true for any chord, whatever fret it is, right? I'll play a little lick or two, and then uh, I'll show you what it is. You can hear that sounds pretty comfortable, and you notice my hand is not moving very much. Not even as much as it was in standard tuning when I was playing in that one position there. So the pattern is this. Where's the root? Well, first of all, there's now a root on the fourth string. What's the note next to it? It's the third. One, two, three, right? So you can play a little, little scale there. Just first finger, third finger. Keep going. There's a major scale just played with two fingers. Keep going. There's another root up there, flat seven. Back to the root, you can keep going down. When you get below that on the low string, it's hard to control. That string is naturally going to be floppy, so most players don't really spend much time on that low E. So we got the top five and essentially the top four strings where most of your phrases are going to be located. All right? Now you can even go uh, up into other positions. In each case, it involves memorizing a shape. To play up on that high area there, here's my root. Go up to the third. There's the root again, or root and seventh. Okay. So it's just memorizing a new pattern hard to relate it to your old patterns because all the tuning is so different. So you really think of it as just its own sound, its own shape. Now if I want to play a blues in D and I change to the G chord, well, well the G chord is right where it always is, and I can play the same licks. to the A chord, it's going to get pretty high up there. You can also play it down here. There's a little bit of an adjustment time just in mentally getting used to that difference. 
But keep in mind that open tunings are designed to make your life easier rather than harder. Don't try to play all over the neck and learn a whole bunch of new patterns. It's not necessary. Play the notes within that two fret area. Get comfortable with that and then let your ear guide you when you want to move outside that shape. Now although we use blues as the touchstone when we talk about slide guitar, because there's such a long tradition of slide guitar in blues, it's true also that slide guitar has found its way into a lot of different styles. Um, country music, actually you know where it came from? Most likely Hawaiian music around the turn of the century. That probably influenced blues as well. And it certainly influenced country music. So country music, blues, Hawaiian music, and now it's become just a way of playing the guitar. Remember? One finger, fretless guitar doesn't even have to sound remotely like blues or any other style like that. It can sound like something completely different. Now we're going to play a progression for you here that's in a minor key. It has kind of a moody groove to it. And I'm going to use the same ideas that I explained over the dominant chord in a blues. But instead I'm going to play them over a minor chord. And you'll just get a sound, a, a feeling for how it can be applied. I'm listening for melodies. And I'm playing around chord shapes. Now this particular progression is in the key of A. So I'm going to start, I'm back in standard tuning by the way. I'm going to start with a comfortable A shape, A minor. The first chord change is going to be D minor. And so I'll be looking for D minor right around the fifth fret area there. Back to A. And then it'll go to, uh, oh let's say it'll go to an F major chord. We're making this up as we go along here. An F major chord then an E, major chord, back to A minor. Now that turns out to be the chord changes for a minor blues, but it ain't going to sound like blues, okay? Check it out. Here we go. One, two, a one, two, three. <laughs> We've learned a few new things during this video, I trust. Um, if slide is brand new to you, it's going to take a little time to really get your technique together and to get your damping and your intonation to the point where you want it. And from that point on, it's all style. It's all listening. Just hear the players you like. I highly recommend Earl Hooker. Now, you can hear Earl Hooker on a couple of Muddy Waters records, and he also has some records of his own that are still available. Also recommend Robert Nighthawk, fabulous electric slide guitar players. Muddy Waters played electric slide in sort of an acoustic style. He had his own sound, completely different than the other guys. Those are all part of the tradition, and they're going to teach you to be a better slide player just by hearing the influences that have, have been in everybody's mind when they play slide guitar. So uh, do some listening. Mess around with the, uh, the ideas that I showed you. Try some different styles. Just have fun with it. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on another video one of these days soon. We're going to take it out of here with a little old blues in E. Okay? See you later. <laughs> <laughs>